Well, he was born in Moravia, um, which is now the Czech Republic, born into a farming family. His family had been in the farming and agricultural industry really for 130 years. They had a small holding themselves and obviously this background led to his keen interest in agriculture and growing things. He wasn't entirely inspired to continue on. He was, he was noted as a very bright spark um, by one of his teachers, early el elementary teachers. This led on to him getting a, a scholarship and getting a place uh, in a university um, where he went uh, to study. Well, he came from quite a poor family, actually, and after a while he, he was made an introduction to um, the Augustinian Monastery where he could actually have his subsistence, his board, paid for, but still was able to uh, use his craft and talent as a, as a really good teacher of science and particularly physics, um, but also be able to pursue his scientific interests. He also um, looked after the bees, he, he bees, and produced honey, and he began to breed the bees. There are reports that he, br he bred two strains of bees that became really aggressive and really angry and that the abbot at that time suggested that he, he choose uh, something with a bit less risk and, and those bees were all destroyed but he still maintained his interest in beekeeping and obviously the, 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 the produce, the honey from it. Um, but he also bred mice as well and looked at their characteristics so he was beginning to notice as many people had done before and obviously since then that offspring from parents, whether it's animals or plants, bear resemblance to the parents. And so by looking at the mice he was able to study this. But lo and behold, again with the encouragement of the abbot that he perhaps shouldn't be breeding so many mice, that he might want to apply his interests in other uh, breeding type experiments. And that's where he chose uh, the common pea plant, Pisum savatum. And basically he studied seven P characteristics. So colour and smoothness of the seeds, whether they were grey and round or white and wrinkled. He studied colour of the cotyledons, which were either yellow or green. He, he studied colour of the flowers, either white or violet. He studied the shape of the pods, whether full or constricted. Colour of the unripe pods, whether yellow or green. Position of the flowers on the stem and height of the plants, whether they were short or tall. So over the period 1856 um, to 1863, he actually carried out something like 29,000 different experiments on these pea plants and examining the various characteristics. Um, as a result of this, um, he made a number of, of key observations. Um, and that the inheritance of any trait, so how a pea looked, any of the, the seven traits they examined, there was basically a contribution from, from, from both parents that sometimes, depending on the characteristic, the contribution from one parent was, was dominant, only it would appear, and he was able to uh, predict the frequency um, by which these traits would appear as well. So what he did was a clever um, bringing together of multi-disciplines of science, which is very common these days, and which was about undertaking uh, the careful growth of these pea plants, the very careful observations associated with them. But then with the number of analyses that he did, he applied mathematical formulae. Well, he's really the father of modern genetics. So he came up with a number of key principles based on uh, the exciting experiments and the very many, many experiments that he performed at the time when he was an Augustinian monk. So in 1866 he produced this um, seminal paper. At the time it was very low impact. It, it only received a request for three or four different copies and it was many years later that the implications and the profound nature of his observations were realised. People say he was maybe just more than a bit lucky. He finished off working with the, with, the, with the pea plant. He tried to do the same with the bees because the fascination with bees was still there. But because they didn't breed in the same way, he never was able to emulate those results. But now as we know more about um, how they bred, um, etc., that we, we can understand why he hit a brick wall with that. But, but he, he nevertheless, with the, 
the species that he chose, um, he looked far and wide and deeply to, to understand and to be able to map the predictability. And of course, it's this is the very essence of plant breeding and plant selection for agricultural purposes and so on that, 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 that we still have today. Well, I guess the timing was a bit unfortunate for him because at the time the big hot areas in, in biology were Darwin, Lamarckism, um, looking at, at, at early evolution and it's only later whenever these um, areas were looked at in the detail were looked at by other scientists that they realised that they all actually helped form the whole picture and were only part, uh, parts of the puzzle. But, but Darwin had many followers um, and there were many more people listening and receptive and, and potentially understanding. And, and Mendel just was, remember, an, a, an Augustinian monk in this tiny monastery um, and didn't have access to, to huge learned societies or professional bodies or whatever else that, that some of these other scientists would have had.